Well, today on Nation, a Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking all about organizing the chaos. Either you're in chaos or it's coming up darn quick. So we're going to talk about how you get to be more efficient, how you get to work with less stress, how you get more done, and how you just grow. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you enjoy the show almost seven years. We're almost starting the seventh year of this podcast. A ton of episodes, some worse than others, but some of them are pretty good. Maybe you should check them out. Anywhere podcasts are found. But. We're there. Right now, when I'm recording this, we're in uh, April, almost of May. And I always like how instantly we get chaotic. How instantly we get from like winter mindset to like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. It is a light switch in our industry. It's one day you're getting two, three calls. The next day you're getting 50 calls. And you're like, what the heck? How is everybody doing the same thing? How does everybody know the same thing? Well, there's no rhyme to that reasoning, right? There's no understanding that I've been able to come up with. There's a lot of different things. There's weather and everything else, right? A lot of reason for people to call, but when it happens, it happens fast. And we, if we could predict like when, it would be amazing. And we would all be calm, cool, and collected, but that's not what it is. So I want to talk about organizing this chaos because we go from zero to 100 really quick. We go very chaotic. And it's not even the fact that you can't handle the chaos. It's just that there's so many pieces at it that you're just stumbling. And then by the time the day is done and you're like, oh, well, tomorrow will be better. And just you're always running on marbles when it gets super, super busy. But it's something that happens every single year. And if you've been in business for a long time, you know this, but if you're newer in business, you're like, okay, well, how do I kind of navigate? And that's what we're talking about. It's that like organizing the chaos. And I got to start off by saying one thing that I know most of you, 99% of you do not do now or to the capacity you should. And that's just automating. Automation is something that you think about in like factory work, right? Like there's, oh, there's a robot that, no, hold on. Automating your business in pieces of, it's using Zapier. If you don't know what that is, it is basically a, if this, then that, if you know that program, same concept where it's basically a prompt from one program to the other. So say um, somebody fills out a uh, contact form their information is loaded into a Google page and you're gotten a notice. Right. There's a lot of things. I mean, tens of thousands of things that can connect, if not more. One of the things. But there's also like responsive. If you're using responsive, there is a follow up function in that. If you're using uh, nice job, which, again, you know, I love nice job uh, for reviews. They automate that. Right. That just means that you basically have. Kind of like another employee that you're just not paying a lot of money. People always tell me, well, response bids, you know, expensive response bid, by the way, is a plugin you put into your website and people can go and get estimates anytime they want book a job right through there. And you're like, well, no, they want to talk to me. No, they don't guaranteed guaranteed your, you will book more jobs by having response bid on your page. Anyway, it does a thousand things. Response bid basically takes all of that information. And if somebody's just looking at a price, you now know the price. You can go call them, but it also sends automated. Hey, you checked out our company and looked for a price uh, yesterday, last night. Any other questions? It does the follow-up for you. Cool. You don't have to do that. Zapier. If you are loading something into a Google sheet or a Google form or, or whatever you're doing, however you track, say your calls, your call log, your estimates, that type of thing, you can automate it so that one line gets then put into a, a QuickBook invoice or say you're connecting it to uh, quote IQ or one of those other pro- programs, um, job or things like that, right? You can take those and put them all together. 
a program like a CRM is automation. Basically, you do one thing and it does a whole bunch of things. Scheduling, timing, blah, 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 blah. So many people don't utilize the automation in the industry. They just don't think that it's possible or they don't think it could help them. And I'm telling you, automation can do so many things, so much, so much. You can automate email sends. You can set up, say you do, you do 12 months of email blasts. Just schedule it. That's automation. That means that on May 3rd, everybody gets an email automatically. You built those maybe in, in January. June, they got a, a different email. It's already made. It's already done. It's done. It's automated. Remember, you can do more if you're not doing more. That sounds odd, I know, but there are so many things you can do. And this isn't like expensive. This is like very, very, very affordable to be able to do these little type of automations. And before you say, which automations should I do? And send me a text and ask, I'm gonna tell you the same thing I'm gonna tell you right now. There's a ton of them out there, but you gotta find what works for you. You gotta find what you need and what you think you could do. Mundane tasks are what can be automated. I'm not gonna tell you what you should do for your business in the automation side, because there's so many pieces to that. But it's so good. I use automation now, not even window cleaning. I, I'm not, I don't even clean windows. And I have automation in so many, so many aspects. Uh, on the side of the automation, by the way, if we're talking about, uh, you know, all that, I don't have it in here, but AI itself is phenomenally amazing. If you have not used ChatGPT or one of those programs like that, just try it. There's something called prompt engineering, which is basically how you tell it to do something. You can't just be like, hey, write me an email. It would just doesn't know what to do. Like it didn't give it enough direction. So you have to give it specific direction in the tone, in the style, in the information, in the how are you saying it, like pretending to be a what to a who. There's a lot of things to it, but AI is another great, great option for a lot of the things you can kind of make it sound real and not like a robot. I mean, you can also see stuff outlined where people didn't really do it right and it's you know, it sounds so absolutely corny. You're like, eh, you didn't write that. Don't do that. But anyway, in automation, AI, it's phenomenal. Do more without doing more is a huge piece to this puzzle. And again, we're organizing the chaos. If I got to do something that, yeah, maybe only takes a minute or two, but I got to do it 20 times a day throughout the day and stop things to do this thing. And if I don't, then I miss the thing. Like, automate. That's where responsive it comes in. Again, not a plug for response of it. Uh, I know I've known Kurt forever, awesome guy. But something like that is just something that's out there that people are doing their own thing. They're not even interacting with you. Amazon and eBay. If you've ever bought from Amazon or eBay, all that stuff takes your, well, they need to talk to me. They really need to talk to a real human. Nope, they need real quick, fast responses. Can they talk to you human if they want? Yes, but some people don't even want to do that. Right? Okay. I'm off that one. But another one that you can fix to organize the chaos is your calendar. And this is another one that people don't understand that they have the power to do something about. And it's the calendar. The calendar itself is the main piece to your company because it shows when work's getting done. And I'll tell you, if you have 100 employees where it's just you, you have eight hours, maybe 10 if you're pushing it on the day, but eight to 10 hours of that day to do work. Now, if you have lots of employees, you have lots of eight to 10 hours, but you have that. There is no, like, you, you can't make people work every day, 16 hour days. You're gonna lose people and you're screwing up your business. So there is a finite time in a day. And watch this. That's been three seconds. Regardless of what I did or what you were doing or what anybody did, time is always ticking. You lost the three seconds. You don't get that back. So the calendar is so important because if you have eight hours today to accomplish work, 
and four hours of that is done because you went out to eat or fell asleep or whatever the excuse is, you don't get the four hours back. You're not like, well, I'll just work four hours more tomorrow. You don't get that. So if you lose work, you lose time. You lose it all. You don't get it back. So how do you fix a calendar? Tighten up your drive time. Think about how much time you're wasting driving if you got multiple cities. Put those in. The best thing, one of the best things I ever did for our scheduling is we had two cities that were kind of close together, but we did eh, about 30% in one and 70% in the other. All I did was create days. This day and this day, those crews are in this town. This day and this day, they're in this town. And when somebody calls, instead of just piling it on the first place, I find that position. And you go, well, like, you know. I don't want to have gaps. In, well, if you got gaps, you're not working hard enough to go get this, the, the, the jobs, right? Like, you know, I know how many people of you are booked out right now, but it's you're all over the place. Well, if in a day you drive back and forth between cities and say you have 30 minutes between jobs, a crew of two, 30 minutes between jobs, and you have four jobs in a day. Just even numbers. You just wasted four hours, because there's two people, 30 minutes, each person, it's an hour every time. You just really, you just lost four hours of production in one crew. In one crew. So if you're earning $100 a man hour, that's what you're bringing in, or that's what they're producing, I know we're not absolutely perfect and there is no drive time, but just hypothetically, that's $400 a day you're losing. That's $2,000 a week in one crew. $2,000 a week in production. Now, we'll never go to zero drive time. I know that. But I'm saying if you could drop that number just a little bit, what does that look like? If you're telling me, man, I'm booked out months. Okay, what if I could give you four hours of work every day? You'd be like, oh my gosh, you can't work those guys that hard. No, I know, but you see what I'm saying? You're losing that by the drive time. You're losing that in the schedule. You're losing that by not having a float board. If somebody calls and goes, hey, it looks like it's going to rain. Uh, oh, there's a cloud. I don't want to have it done. You got your rain guarantee. You got your all that stuff. Puts it all together. Somebody still doesn't want to do it. What do you do? You just go, okay. Well, that was a four-hour job. Now I'm going to, oh, the crew's just going to sit around. You don't get the four hours back. Have a float board to fill the schedule. If that happens, okay, hey, we'll reschedule. We're booked out quite a ways. We're going to have to push you out. I know. Blah, blah. Rebook. And now go, hey, instead of this job, we're doing this, this, and this off the floater board. Here you go. Now they're still doing work. I know a lot of you too are like, man, I don't have a float board because I'm too busy. That's uh, absolutely not, not a good idea. Because here's the thing. When you have a float board, say you have 10 items on the float board and you just are so busy and you've never rescheduled anything and there's never been a pocket and you're having issues, then just start putting, don't put everything on the float board, then schedule it if you need to. But there's so many things to schedule. You can put on a flow board, just anything that they don't need to be home for. So gutter cleaning, outs, uh, all that stuff. Let them know you could do that uh, in the middle. If somebody, uh, a customer uh, reschedules, if the day looked like it was going to rain and it didn't rain, if they want extra hours, say somebody wants overtime and you're okay with that, maybe they're going to come and do it on a Saturday. Maybe that person is sick or their kid is sick. And they dropped off the crew, but they still want to get those hours back. You give it to them, float board stuff on Saturday. There's so many benefits to a float board. The calendar in general, you can optimize what you're doing. You right now, without hiring or changing any piece of the employment side of it, you can do more. It's organizing the chaos, man. Okay, I'll take it a second. Shameless plug of the day. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. You've probably seen me around doing things, but that is what I do. My main job and way I get paid in this world is by putting in orders. Literally, it's what I do. And I want to be your rep. I want to be your help. I want to be your uh, dude. I want to be your supply guy, man or ma'am. 
Uh, save my number right now. Take a second. I'm going to give you my number. You ready? It's 862-312-2026. Absolutely amazing. All of you who do this, uh, it really is how I exist in the world. So thank you to all of you. Uh, it has been phenomenally busy uh, here at WCR, which is it's it's great. Um, but uh, I want to help more of you. And this is just questions. I mean, obviously putting orders in is fantastic. Ask me questions. I want to earn the sale. I want to be able to do things for you so that you're like, hey, instead of pushing go, I'm going to let him put the order in. And it costs you nothing extra to have me in your corner as your rep. Nothing. So please do that. 862-312-2026. Also, I talked about this. I don't know if you're watching this. A lot of people don't watch it on YouTube, but the new American Window Cleaner magazine. It's a real paper magazine. Listen, real magazine, by the way. Uh, this magazine has been around forever. We've done iterations. We redesigned the magazine when I bought it like two years ago, almost three years ago. And we just went through another one. We got a new layout guy. He's phenomenal. This magazine is so sexy. It's so good. It's so good. So uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the new magazine, get a subscription. Also, it comes with the sticker sheets, of course. So if you want all of these cool stickers that you're seeing, these window cleaning stickers that everybody's got on their buckets, that's where they're getting it from. It's from the magazine, awcmag.com. Also, if you just wanna buy a bunch of stickers and you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to read or look at pictures and I don't want a magazine, just buy stickers, okay? Uh, one other quick tip, because you're still listening to me ramble. Uh, I do a little bit of private coaching as you guys know, I'm always booked up, but I have one slot open. It just popped up right now. One slot, one slot open first come first serve on that. Uh, I think it's already, uh, picked up, but it's not secured yet. So if you want that, let me know. Okay. Off all of that, we got automating, helping you there, organizing the calendar, getting that part back into kind of play, but the whole idea of this in the organizing the chaos is really to remove the thinking. Does that make sense? Remove you having to think about a thing to make it go. If you have to think of a hundred things in a day, each of those things takes time. That's where systemizing everything comes into play. It is the most unsexy thing about business is systemizing. I know. It's boring, it's nerd stuff, I get it, I'm a nerd. But systemizing things means when X happens, this is how we take care of that every time. It's written down, it's the reason that in the very back of a McDonald's, every McDonald's in the entire country and world, there's little pictures. How did I make a cheeseburger? It shows you where to put the ketchup on the bun. It shows you how many pieces of pickle you put on there, right? It shows you everything. It's because when this happens, when we need this, this is how we do it. And if that's systemized, no one thinks about it and it's done the exact same way every time. You are not such a little company that you cannot do that. Systemizing things is so important. It is such a long play. There's so much to systemizing and creating systems. And some of you that I've talked to are really good with it. Some of you have never done anything like that. And then things get missed and then you're employees end up doing it the way they want to because there's no system in place and it's just chaos. You're adding chaos to chaos. And what, what do I mean in the, in the systemizing? You can systemize how you show up to a door. When we showed up, every crew, every crew chief showed up and did the exact same speech in the exact same order every time. In their own flair, the exact same. When the job was done, the exact same thing happened every time, every crew, every job. Guess what? They knew exactly what was going to happen. So it got done 100% of the time it got done. And 100% of the time, they didn't have to think about it. You're like, well, how does that make me organized? I'm talking about systemizing everything from when somebody calls you to how you do bids to blah, blah, blah. But even down to this crew that I'm talking about, the reason that system works is that, A, I'm as efficient as possible because I know I want X, Y, Z to get done. Every job, it will. I collect 100% of the customers, 100% of the customers. For the last two or three years I had my business, residential customers were 100% collected at time of service. How many of you have money owed? 
I would guess a hundred percent of you have some kind of accounts receivable. You have some kind of money that hasn't quite been paid yet. We didn't because it was in the process. It was in the system. Every piece of that puzzle, if somebody's not thinking it gets done and it gets done fast and efficient. I'm going to give you a weird example because you know I love my analogies. If somebody, if a cop gets, busts somebody and arrests them, they give them the random rights, right? You have the rights to remain silent. Anything you say it can and will be used. They say it that fast because it is ingrained in their head. They don't go, uh, you have the right to remain, you know, like they don't say it so slow. They don't have to think about what they're supposed to say. If they didn't have a little card or memorize that Miranda rights, they wouldn't know what to say. And then everybody would be different and then they have to think about it. And it's a, Systemizing things makes it happen, makes it sure it gets done and makes sure it gets done every time without you thinking. Every piece to your business should have a system and how we do X when this happens. When a customer calls and says, hey, I would like a quote. How does that look? Every time it's done this way. Every time, here's the form, here's what it is, boom, I could do an estimate. People ask me every time, they're like, how are you doing quotes over the phone in like 60 seconds? Uh, Cause I do it the exact same way hundreds of times a week. We, we did that the exact same way in all the staff that was in the office. Every staff member did the exact same speech and the exact same paper, put it in the exact same form and booked the exact same way. Some of you go, well, I've done the dentist clothes, you know, and um, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's not where it, that's because you don't, you don't have it as a system yet. You're stumbling across it. You're thinking you're not confident. You don't know how to do it. So every time it's a little bit different, you haven't honed it in. You have to have systems. Systems make it flawless, flawless. Systemize everything. And it's chaotic. That means you're busy. Man, I don't know what to advertise. Okay. If, if you want to write me an angry email and say that, that I don't know what I'm talking about, absolutely do that. You can. But one of the ways to organize the chaos is to advertise during chaos. And how this works, hang on, give me a second, is that when you become more efficient, more can get done. When you have pockets, right? So we know eventually it'll slow down a little bit before fall, you know, it may pick up a little bit in fall, all that stuff. You know that at a certain point, everybody pushes to get to July 4th and then July 5th, it starts to slow down, maybe in your area. If your ROI right now is the best, fill everything you can, because then as you become more efficient, you have more things to be efficient with. If you have one job in a town and one job an hour away. It can't be really efficient between the two. There's no other option. But if I got 20 jobs in one town and 20 jobs in the other town, now I can be really efficient between those jobs. In the grand scheme of things, the more work you have, the more efficient you can be. If you're at a point, you're like, it's so busy. If you advertise and get a bunch of new stuff, guess what? You then hire and then you have another crew to take that, right? It brings that timing down. If you're out too far, bring that timing back. The only way to do that is become more efficient, get more done in a day, and get more people to do that work. And eventually, you may have 10 trucks in the road and you're booked a month out, two weeks out, three weeks out. Now, you have to fill the schedule more, feed the beast when the beast is bigger but you have to advertise when it is. If you're chaotic right now, don't stop advertising because then you're going to go from being chaotic to being dead. And then you're like, oh, I better advertise. It's this. Then it's too late. Advertise during the chaos, but understand how to control the chaos. You have to advertise. You got a rancher out there and he's got 500 cows. They got to bring them to pasture to pasture, but they don't go, oh man. Oh, this, these cows, they're just really pretty chaotic. So I'm going to just like, once the next load goes to the slaughter, I'm going to have three cows. That'll be way easier. What? No. You go, hey, I got the pasture space. I, maybe I have to hire more cowboys. Maybe I have to make sure the lines are tighter. 
maybe I need to get some automation in the corrals and things and ways that they do that and go to, to, to market and everything else. I can do more. I can now have 600 head of cattle because I have automated feeders. Understand that every industry needs the chaos to stop being chaos. Chaos has to not be chaotic to be controlled. Control is not chaos, right? Opposite ends. You can do more as you become less chaotic, but you need more to accomplish that. Don't stop advertising because you're busy. Don't start advertising because it's chaotic. Understand that you just need to herd your cattle better. And you have to advertise. And the hardest part of this whole thing is hiring. If you're a sole proprietor, you're, you're, you're owner operator, right? Cool. Like absolutely anything you do is right. No matter if you have 20 crews or no crews, but if you are hiring, you're having an epic year, you are organizing the chaos and yet you're still booked out farther than you would like. Your close rates going down because you're out so far. Your confidence is dropping. Your close rates dropping. You need to hire. People always, I can't hire now. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I can't hire. What? What? Man, my, my hair is too long to get a haircut. What? You have to hire. Well, yeah, but I'm too busy to train. Yeah, that's why you need to hire. But you still have to train. You have to control this chaos. You have to create the systems for the training. You have to create how to hire people. You have to do that. I know companies I deal with all the time that are hiring, hiring like five, 10 guys a year. They're always hiring. Well, yeah, but they have the, there's always an excuse. It's not my market. It's not my customer. No, they're running this as a business. They want this to be a big business. They want the business structure to work and they want to not have to work about it that hard. I, I know dozens and dozens of window cleaners that are well over a million dollars a year, real numbers, not internet numbers. And in that same side of it, some of those guys are the calmest, coolest, just chill dudes because everything runs so efficiently. I have guys that are literally just taking months off. Like, ah, I'll take like two weeks, take my wife out to whatever, Italy. I think it'd be kind of a nice little summer trip. And there's other people who you're like, hey, you're going to the huge convention this year? Like, oh, I can't, I'm too busy. You're you're too busy to plan something in August for two days, you're doing something wrong. You're doing something severely wrong. And if you're in that position, it's chaotic. It's too much. It's too much chaos. So control eliminates chaos. Control your company. Organize the chaos and you will be happier. You'll get more done. You'll be profitable. You'll just be better off. Nobody wants to have so much stress. A little stress is fine. It's a little energetic. It's good, but why make more than you need? Organize the chaos. Okay. Shameless plug number two here. Wait, 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 listen, hear me out. I want to be your rep. I would love to put your orders in. Just shoot me a text. Yo, Jersey, everything's in the cart. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Do it. Some of you putting your own, or, 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 uh, own orders in, I want to put them all in. Big or small, it does not matter. Please, it's no bother at all. And I'm going to give you something. If you're still listening, say there's a sale. And you text me like, hey, put the order in. And I, I, for some reason, I don't get back to you right away. It still locks you in for the sale. Like even I got people that text me at like, you know, one in the morning. And then by like one of the 15, they're like, I put it in. You didn't answer. I'm like what? Calm down. Relax. I got you. Also, new issues, new 
layouts, new everything in the American Window Cleaner magazine. By the way, look at that. Look at that. So good. So good. Go to AWC Image and you got get the uh, magazine. It comes with a free sticker page in each one shipped to your door. Or just buy a bunch of stickers. We got a lot of stickers. We always do overprints. And I can send you a chunk of stickers. And they're cheap. So do that. Uh, also, uh, coaching, if you want, uh, reach out to me on that. Again, that maybe fill the spots fill up like instantly. But I forgot to mention it. Uh, anyway, go ahead and do that. More importantly, for next week, really, really, really look at organizing things. Because you're getting stressed out, you can fix your stress by organizing the chaos. So do that, but more importantly, go out there and keep on being epic.